Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. And in this video, what I wanna do is talk about how to use the Airtable API. I was looking to see if there was a good video on this and there really wasn't, and it's really cool. I love Airtable in general. So if you follow me at all, you probably know I love Airtable. I use Airtable for all sorts of different projects. Um, because a lot of times you have small personal projects that just don't really need you to build a whole application from scratch. And Airtable really gives you the tools to do 90% of what you'll need for like small, for really anything um, when it comes to keeping track of data. And especially in its free tier, it's great for like small groups or small events and whatnot. And you could, but let's say you want to display the data in your own sort of custom application or make use of the data in your own custom application because, um, you know, you just don't want it to be using the Airtable interface. And again, Airtable, just so you're aware of the features. So this is like a, a basic Airtable database. Okay, I made one, it's free, Airtable.com, go open up your account. Um, okay, I'll put my referral link in there so that way you guys can, we can both get hooked up with a $10 credit if you use my link, so that'd be nice if you can do that. But um, basically, out of the box, you can basically do forms, calendars, galleries, Kanbans, and the way you organize your information. They have all sorts of different field types. Um, let's go through the different field types. Okay, and you can do like formulas. So if you've worked with like CRMs where you can do all sorts of really cool, fun stuff, um, you have all those features here. It's really cool. And you can customize those views and then you can share them. So you can share them as a shareable page or create a widget that you can put on a web page. So you already have a lot of capability just without using the API. But again, maybe you had some custom usage um, of the data that you just can't do um, right here. Okay, so you wanna put it through your own application. Or maybe um, there's just some sort of capability that doesn't work with the formulas and the features that are in. So you wanna pull the data, manipulate it, and then store it back. You can do that. You can create an application that does that using the Airtable API. So I create this practice table. And the cool thing is that the documentation is pretty easy. You just go to airtable.com slash API, and then you can look up any of your different databases. So I have a lot of them. Um, and it actually creates custom documentation for your particular database. Um, okay, all you have to, so I'm gonna be using NP, the NPM backend JavaScript version. Um, there are different alternatives. So if you go over here to the beginning of the documentation, there is sort of a Ruby implementation and a .NET implementation to use the .NET database. Uh, there's also a browser version, okay? I'm gonna use the Airtable JS node uh, version of this, okay? So let's go to my code just to show you guys how it works. So first, you have to, first thing you'd have to do is npm i Airtable, okay? So you have to install the Airtable library, which I've already done. I've already been playing with this. You like any library, bring it in. So I bring it in as the variable air table. I'm bringing in .env because I have my API key um, and my base ID as um, environmental variables because you don't. I don't want to show you guys that on video because then you'd be able to manipulate any of my databases. Okay. Now, for some reason, your database API key does get exposed at any point, you can go to your account, you can just hit regenerate and it just generates you a new one. And I think the old one expires. So, you know, you're not out of luck. But again, you always wanna take those steps to protect your information. So that's why I would prefer to use the API in the back end, because it's really hard to hide your API key on the front end, okay? Um, this is the reason why generally you do a lot of your data calls on the back end to, to avoid exposing that information okay so in that case that's what so basically what i'm doing here is i'm destructuring my api key and my base id from uh the my environmental variables and then here we create a new air table object okay and that's called base you can call it whatever you want but base meaning it's it's your particular database this because i'm saying hey i want to i have this api key that shows that i have authority to to manipulate this base so this is the account that's accessing it and this is the ID of the base. So then I'll try to connect to this base, check to see if my API key, my account has the authority to access or manipulate that base. And now it gets stored in this base object here that I can then do stuff with. 
So we'll go through some basic stuff. And let me just clear out the terminal so that we don't have all that stuff. There we go. So what I want to do is select a record. So I do base dot select is the function. Select just takes one argument. It's an object to query. So you can um, like, let me just take a look here at my database. So let's look for one that, let's look for this record here. So we want the one that has the name hello. I'm pretty sure you just pass in name, hello, and then that'll query for the record that has a name hello. And then it returns you the results. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the each page, just first page and then there's each page. Each page basically returns sort of the ability to go through the different pages of results. Okay, you could also specify sort of how many results you get here and some other details. Like I can show you in the documentation. So list records. So you can kind of see here, you have some options. Um, so we still here, they're saying to select the first three records from this particular view. So you're looking, looking for the data in this particular view. Okay, by doing this, it's just doing the default view, which would usually be the grid view. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do a query that way. Not 100% sure if that's exactly the way I should be doing it. Um, Cause usually I just pass it in at the object and get all the data. Okay, so in the each page function, well basically we can pass in a callback um, which basically takes in the records. So it'll give us the results, which will be in a records object. Um, and then a next function, which allows us to go to the next page of results. Okay, which will then just run the function again. On the next page of results. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do here, now that I'm in this callback, I can just do uh, records dot for each, cause it's an array. And we're just going to say the rec singular record, and we'll just console.log the record, which is a huge object. Okay, so I don't want to just console log the record itself. If I want all the data from the record, there's a property called fields that's literally the object with all the keys and values. So I want to console log record dot fields. And if I did this right, we should only be getting one console log for that one record. So let's try it out. Nope, base.select is not a function. Let's see here, where did I make a mistake here? Base, oh, I forgot the table name. Base needs to be a function. Base table one is the name of the table. Let me just confirm that. And table one is the name of the table. Okay, so in that case, uh, no, I'm gonna go here. And then I can do that chain. So again, I have to select for table because again, the database may have many tables in it. And then I select my, do my query, and then I can iterate through my results. Okay, so here you will the following process select will be ignored, name. Okay, so that isn't the way to do the query, but it still got me all the records. So there's the three records. Okay, so let's actually examine that a little bit better so we can see how you would query. And see here fields only data for your fields filter by formula page size sort view call format time zone let's see here filter by formula formula use to filter records the formula will be evaluated for each record and if the result is zero so if combined so for example to only include records where name isn't empty pass in not name equals okay so I guess for that I would need to be more familiar with the uh, Airtable formulas okay but that's where you would do that I guess and here you can select which fields show up maximum number of records and how I want to sort it all that stuff so I will just take this out for now okay so that's that's the how to look for a particular record Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to do a create. So I'm going to keep the base table one because that doesn't change, except now it's going to be to create, okay, which is this function right here. Um, page size, let's go to create a record. Okay, so basically what you do is you pass in 
um, an array of all the records you want to add. So I'm going to add some, so I'm going to pass in an array. And then in each array, it should be a object with an object. So it's an object with a property called fields. And in that property, we have an object that then would have like name, which is one of the fields. Number one. And then the other field is notes number one okay and again I can check what those field names are by looking at the table see name notes I could do attachments that gets a little bit more complicated okay so no number one and let me copy a second object control C, oh no control C comma okay fields name number one Notes number one. Um, do, 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 fields name number one. Uh, let's change this to number two. Okay, so that first argument is created. It basically specifies what I'm adding. And again, so these records do not exist yet. See, there's no number one, number one, number two, number two yet. But we'll get there. Okay, so first we're again adding the array, and then the second function is basically you get returned the records that are created and you can decide what to do with them. So in that case, uh, second argument, that would go right over here. Okay, and then I can just do, um, I think it was error records it was. Let me just double check. So error before records, yeah, error before records. Error before records, arrow function. And then what we're gonna do, is do records dot for each and then we're going to take each record and each record we're going to console dot log the record dot fields but I also want to console log um, the record just so you can see that there's a bunch of stuff in the record aside from just the fields. Okay, and so that's the create, we, we create one, we're gonna create two records, and then we'll console log those records. So then I hit node server.js, that runs the thing. See here, console logs that record object. So one individual record has all these different functions. So here's like, this is the record object. Okay, so there it contains its all information with the Airtable name, ID, the ID of the individual record. Okay, the field. So here's number one, number two, and yeah, these are the functions for like updating, and destroying, fetching um, that we can use. Okie dokie. So that's all there. Now, let's take a look to see if we got added to our table. Oh, there you go, number one, number two. Okay, so we can add stuff to our table. And again, the documentation has details as far as, again, if you want to update the records. Okay, so if we wanted to do that, there's the example. Well, that's the delete example. Where's the... Add some non-empty records to table one. Use the update or replace method. The update will only update the fields you specified, leaving the rest as they were. A replace will perform a destructive update. Uh, replace will perform a destructive update and clear all unspecified cell values. The first argument should array up to 10 fields. Okie dokie. Oh, so basically you just run that update function um, that was inside there. So basically you would call that record. So first we'd have to select the record using select. Once we have the record, then we can then go over here. So we'd have to like select the record by the ID. And then we would run this update function. Up, probably update fields and replace fields. We would then use those functions to update it. And then when we want to delete it, we would just use the destroy function. And yeah, 
that would pretty much be it. There's your that's the API, and you can do that with any any table in your. Uh, and then again, you just go to Airtable slash API, and it takes you to the situation where you have uh, your docs all set up. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this is a pretty neat API. Um, always glad to promote Airtable because it's an awesome product. So go check it out. Ciao.